Hello masters, I want to integrate today in this video uh, Cypress, Cucumber and Docker. So I hope that you can see this until the end because I think you're gonna learn a lot uh, with this particular video. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay masters, um, this project that I'll be reviewing in this video, you can access it in, in a GitHub repository. Its name is Cypress Cucumber Boilerplate and you can use it, okay? So I just wanted to tell you that you can clone it and install the dependencies. So I'm gonna open my Visual Studio code here where I have the, the project already loaded. And I want to explain you how we can run the, the examples that I have under Cypress and end-to-end -end and features here we have a couple of, uh, well, feature files, right? And you can see that I have the login feature and also the tax feature. So how I can run this in, in my project, it's pretty easy. I have a couple of scripts for you here that you can use. The first one is Cypress Runner, that it's basically an alias for Cypress Open, and this is gonna, well, basically open the Cypress uh, Test Runner. So let me show you how it works. I'm gonna click, uh, I'm gonna copy the Cypress Runner script and I can perfectly open the terminal and use the command npm run Cypress runner, right? And you're gonna see that I have the test runner here opening the browser Chrome with the examples that I have for you. I can run the login feature file, here it is. And also I can run the um, stacks.feature file, all right? That's beautiful. Also, instead of opening the terminal, you can also run your scripts using the command Cypress run, right? This is not going to open the test runner. It is going to open only a, well, the browser and you can specify which specs or uh, scripts or feature files you want to run. So for, for instance, you can see that I'm running every single feature that is under this particular path, basically all all what I, what I have in this particular small demo framework. So I can copy this command, um, script uh, Cypress execution, and I can use the command npm run Cypress execution here, right? By default, this is gonna run in, um, in Electron, right? I can prove you that here, Electron over here, and it is running headless. So that's probably why. We are gonna. We are not going to see anything in the UI, right? Because it is, it is uh, running in headless mode, and it is working. You can see that everything is working fine. And now I want to explain you how you can run this. The same, the same is examples that I'm giving you, giving you here in my local computer, but now using Cypress and I'm sorry, Docker and a Docker container and a Docker image. Let's go ahead and take a look of how we can achieve that. All right, masters, let me explain you what's going to happen in this video. Um, I want to create a custom Docker image where I can run my Cypress framework in a Docker container. I'm gonna take advantage of some uh, images that Cypress provide us because you can see here that they have a Cypress Docker images a GitHub repository, okay? Let me, let me explain you what is happening here. I'm sorry. Uh, we have different images. We have Cypress Factory, Cypress Base, Cypress Browsers, and Cypress Included. I'll be using the Cypress Browser images, image, I'm sorry, because it provides us with the operating system dependencies. We have no Cypress. We're gonna include that in the in the next part of the video. And we're gonna be using some browsers, all right? So this is the basically the why I'm gonna be using Cypress browsers. Okay? So uh, since we have this image, we can use it for our own purposes. Uh, I'm not. I am not telling you that um, this is the recommended way to do it, but this is just a solution. All right. You can use the base one that uh, provides us only the operating system, or you can use included that has Cypress inside, or you can use factory for a base image template, which can be used with Rx to create custom Docker images. All right. I just want to give you an example. You can use the different tools that we have for your own, own purposes, all right? So I'll be using the Cypress browser image and you can see that here we have it. This is the name of the image and here we have the text. That's beautiful. I'll be using probably the latest one or I'm not sure if the pre-latest one, <laughs> but uh, well, this is where you can uh, specify or get the tag that you need. So you can see the version of Chrome here and the version of Edge. And that's basically what is going on here in the tag. So you can use the tag that you need for your execution, right? That's beautiful, okay? So uh, in my project, you're gonna see that I have created a Docker file in the root directory, okay? 
here it is docker file and in the docker file i am using some commands to create my own docker image all right i'm gonna explain you and you're gonna understand this uh, in a few seconds just bear with me please okay so as you can see i'll be using from just to use another image as the baseline all right so i'm using the cypress browser image as i'm as i explained to you before the cypress browser image uh, browsers image that cypress provide us and they are ma maintaining them constantly and then i'm specifying the mm, the docker tag all right they they recommend to use the specific docker tag in the documentation so I'm doing it as well in the example, right? So I'm using that as the baseline. And now that we have this image as the baseline, I'm going to create a new directory in that particular Docker container, right? And its name is going to be Cucumber Project. You can name this folder with the name that you want. It, it, it doesn't have to be Cucumber Project, okay? And then I'm going to create or I'm going to define that the directory that I created before is going to be the work directory. So I didn't have to, well, continue defining every single action, specifying the full name. Then we can use a simple dot to refer to our work directory, right? So for instance, I'm going to copy from my local computer, that package.json, right? To the work directory that I defined before using a simple dot, okay? That's beautiful. So I'm going to be copying all the essential files that I need. I'm going to need the package.json because there I have the dependencies and the scripts. I'm going to be copying the jsconfig.json because there is where my route is defined. I'm going to be copying the Cypress Cucumber preprocessor.json because this is the file that contains the step definition paths. And if I'm, I'll be using a, an HTML reporter, uh, here it is. Here is where I can define that, right? Also, I'm going to be using the Cypress config.js because here is where I have all the important configurations to make Cypress running with, with Cucumber. And the Docker file is going to have as well the Cypress folder because <laughs> it, it's the baseline, right? Where we have uh, all the feature files and the step definitions. Also the fixtures, the pages and all that we need to run uh, what I need, right? That's beautiful. And then in the Docker container and sorry in, this, in the docker file as soon as you have everything um, copied inside of your future custom docker image right you're gonna need to install it because you need to install the latest dependencies right um, you need to install cypress you need to install esbuild you need to install the cypress cucumber preprocessor just as you did in your local computer right uh, the first time that you clone it all right in the Docker file, you're going to see as well that I have an entry point. Basically, it is going to uh, it is going to it is a complicated explanation. But basically, here we have um, the the baseline command that we're going to be using Cypress run. OK, and you can or we can use um, then different parameters, right? Like when when we are doing this, let me show you this. When we're gonna we're, when we are doing a Cypress run, right? You can see that we can specify different parameters, right? Well, the simple explanation for this is that with entry point and CMD, we can specify more parameters in the last entry point. So I can do a Cypress run, specify the specs in the future. I can specify the environments, uh, environment variables in the future, and so on. This is the configuration that I that I'm using just uh, to achieve that uh, flexibility in the execution time okay so wear, bear with me and you're gonna see why this is awesome all right <laughs> so i'm gonna start the building process of this image okay and i'll be using this simple command docker build then i'll be using the t command to specify the name of the image and the tag name all right that's it and I'll, then i'll be using a dot because that's required <laughs> okay, so I'm going to copy this and I'll be opening my terminal. I'm going to clear it for you, right? And you're going to see that I'll be using that particular command. Docker build dash T cucumber project, the tag. Well, it, also this is optional, right? The, the, the image name is going to depend on you and also the tag is depend on you. 
that's something that I just wanted to tell you. So if I run this docker build dash t cucumber blah, blah blah, you can see that this is going to start doing every single action that I uh, specified in the docker file. So for instance, um, it it created a cucumber project inside of the docker container, right? I named that cucumber project. You can see as well that I copied every single file that I needed for execution. And then it is currently installing the dependencies that I have in the project or I need in the project, right? In, in that particular Docker image, you can see that it is building. And as soon as I have it, I can run the same tests in a Docker container. Now I don't have to rely on my, in my environment because that particular container, as you remember, it has all the browsers and all the environment um, or the system operating system dependencies that I need. Okay. You can see that the building process is finishing and now it is done. So if I open the Docker desktop, um, well, you can see that under images, I do have a new one, cucumber project. Here it is attack. And well, you have all the details. That's beautiful, right? So if you have, if you can see here, the details, uh, you can see all the layers that it has and all that the stuff that you need to know. Right. All right, masters, it's time to run our, um, well, our tests inside of the Docker image that we created before Cucumber project here, right? That's beautiful. So, uh, well, here in the Docker file, you're going to see some examples that I created for you. Okay. So let's just start with a very simple one. Let's start with a Firefox uh, execution, right? So let me copy this command over here and I'm going to explain you uh, what is going to happen. Okay. So you can see the, the command here, right in the terminal and well, it is basically a Docker run, right? This is the way of how we can execute, uh, well, we can, how we can run a Docker container based on a Docker image. Then I'll be using dash E to have an interactive, interactive session so we can see the locks here in the terminal of, of what is going on, right? And then I'm specifying dash T to specify what image I want to use as the baseline. In my case, I'll be using Cucumber Project because that's the name of the image that I created, Cucumber Project. And then using semicolon over here, I'll be using uh, or specify the tag name. In this particular case is 1.0. That's beautiful. Then I'll be using Cypress Run, right? Um, and I'll be specifying dash dash spec Cypress end to end features browser Firefox. So I'm specifying that I want to execute every single feature, but using the browser Firefox, but now I'm not using my local computer. I'll be using the Docker container that I created before. It's beautiful. Let's run it. You're going to see that right away. It is going to start uh, the, the process, but now instead, instead of doing this in my computer, here we have a new container and here you have the execution process that is happening inside of the, well, um, of the computer or oh, I'm sorry, inside of the Docker that I created before, right? Here you can see the terminal. If I check the LS, if I do an LS in the container, you can see that I have a Cypress, Cypress config and probably node modules because I have installed every single dependency, right? With the Docker container command, npm run, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. npm install over here. That's it. It is really, it is working. And you can see here the locks for some reason it is not finishing or something. There, there was an issue inside. I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, here, here you have a, an issue or uh, a failure for your remote page to load. Well, here it is. Let me see if, if at the end, well, this is a, an issue that I, I didn't know that I had. <laughs> now I do in Firefox, because I think that if I run this in Chrome, uh, it is going to run perfectly fine. And I'm going to make the test in a few seconds. Okay. So yeah, Firefox has an issue, right? And the issue is basically that it was waiting for uh, 60 seconds for my remote page to load. And for some reason, uh, it didn't fire the load event, right? That's basically the reason of why this, this is failing in the second instance, when we are 
doing some tests. Okay, that's fine. But this is only f uh, working or uh, happening in the Firefox image, I think, because if I run this in the Chrome one, you're gonna see that this is gonna work, okay? Okay. We have a couple of failures that I need to check. That's fine, that's totally fine. But now, uh, if I run this in a Docker, in a, in a run, I'm sorry, in a Chrome instance, right? Let me see. Because I have the example as well here, I can run this in Chrome. And in the past, Chrome didn't have any issue. Let me see if now it has it. <laughs> All right, login page, it is working. You can see that every single execution seems to be working fine. Yeah, there it is. Login page is working fine. And also the login page with tags. That's beautiful. You can see how flexible it is, right? And it is working fine in, in, in with the with two browsers that we have using the Cypress browsers image, right? That's beautiful. And you can see that everything is working perfectly fine. All right, guys, uh, just for um, for the last test and show you that also we can run um, a particular attack, right? Such as mobile or something, I can do this. NPM run, the name as well of the image, Cypress run, and I can specify the tax mobile. Okay, the only tag that it should execute is this one, success login, because it has the mobile tag. And you can see that it is working perfectly fine here. Yeah, that's beautiful, guys. I think that, um, I know this is a complex video to understand probably, but it's so useful because you can see how to use Docker, how to use a Cypress image, an official image for your, um, for your own uh, needs right and i hope that you like it let me know in the comment section what do you think about this solution do you think this is optimal it is not it has a um something that i don't like to be honest and it is that the image is so heavy you can see that it well its weight is is heavy but yeah that's something that we can uh, improve using a, another image and installing everything manually or something that we can improve but yeah, that's something that I wanted to show you, how you can run Cypress, Cucumber, and Docker so easily, all right? So thank you very much, you guys, and I hope that you like it. Please subscribe, and see you in the next one. Thank you, Masters. Bye-bye.